guys, it's Jennifer. About two years ago, I created a photo tutorial on my blog demonstrating four different ways to make your fondant shiny. Today, it is still the most popular tutorial on my website, so I decided to make an updated version of this tutorial and include two new products that were not around when I made the original tutorial. So today, I will be demonstrating five different methods for giving your fondant cakes a gorgeous glossy finish, and I will share with you the ups and downs of each product. For this demonstration, I am using Wilton fondant. I colored and rolled out a layer of dark purple fondant, and then rolled out a white layer just below the purple. The purple layer was kneaded in cornstarch while I was coloring it, which causes it to be less oily. The white layer was kneaded without any added ingredients. This will allow us to see if the glazes react differently with an oilier fondant. Also, the white layer will allow us to see if any of these products will discolor your fondant. So are you guys ready to see what happens? Okay, let's get started. The products I will be using are Dinky Doodle Shell and Shine Spray, PME Glaze Spray, Shortening, Corn Syrup and Alcohol, and vegetable oil. The first product I am testing is Dinky Doodle Shell and Shine Spray. I am super excited about this product because this is my very first time using it and I've heard some really great things about it. Before spraying it, I gave it a really good shake. Then I placed some cardboard over my fondant to protect it from the spray. Then I sprayed my first coating onto the fondant. I let the first layer dry for a few minutes, and then I sprayed a second layer onto the fondant. The next spray I am testing out is PME Glaze Spray. I gave this can a good shake as well and sprayed a nice even base coat on my fondant. I let the glaze dry for a few minutes and then gave it a second coat. The next product I am using is plain old Crisco Vegetable Shortening. To apply it to the fondant, you can either brush it on with a paintbrush or wear food safe gloves and use your fingers to rub it on. Once I have a nice even coat, I like to use a paper towel to buff away any excess shortening to give it a smooth finish. The next glaze I am using is the corn syrup and alcohol recipe. I already have a little corn syrup in my dish, so I just need to add a little vodka to make the glaze. I am adding enough vodka so that it is about equal with the amount of corn syrup that is already in the dish. I gave this mixture a good stir until the ingredients were well mixed together. Then I used a medium sized paintbrush to paint the glaze on the fondant. The last ingredient we will be testing is vegetable oil. I poured a little vegetable oil into a dish, then I used a small paintbrush to paint it onto my fondant. The first thing I noticed about each of these products is that they all enhance the color of the purple fondant. The purple color is much more vibrant where it is glazed. Also, each one of these products gave the fondant a beautiful shine, but the level of shine varied from a soft satin finish to a high gloss water-like shine. Oh guys, look at the twinkle on that corn syrup and alcohol glaze. Isn't it gorgeous? So now to let you guys know what I discovered about each product. Dinky Doodle Shell and Shine. Oh my goodness, I am in love. It was so easy and quick to apply, and I got the same glossy result on both the purple fondant and the white. For super fast all over cake coverage, this is it. According to the instructions, this product can also be applied to chocolate, which means an oily fondant should not affect your results. And as you can see on my white fondant, that was the case. It was uniform coverage over both strips of fondant. The only downside I can see from this product is that it darkened my white fondant. 
The video didn't pick it up very well, but the white fondant is now an ivory cream color. So keep that in mind and don't plan on using this product on cakes that must be super white. Now for PME Glay Spray. This stuff is awesome as well, and surprisingly, it contains the same glazing ingredients as the Dinky Doodle Shell and Shine, and that ingredient is edible shellac. So this product gave an almost identical result. In the video, it doesn't look as glossy as the Shell and Shine, but that is only because I didn't spray as much onto the fondant. And just like the Shell and Shine, this product also yellowed my white fondant. Both products dried within 30 minutes and gave a beautiful glossy firm coating. Now for the shortening. This is one of the most user friendly ways to shine up a cake. Because it is a fat, it will smooth over any type of fondant no matter how dry or how oily. It is a wonderful way to bring out and brighten the color of your fondant and it is safe to use on white fondant without the risk of discoloring it. It isn't glossy, but it does give a lovely satin finish to your fondant, and it also helps blend in small amounts of cornstarch or powdered sugar residue to help give your fondant a nice clean look. Now for the corn syrup and alcohol recipe. This one is my most favorite to look at. I could stare at that gloss glisten and gleam in the sunlight for hours. But though this one gives the shiniest result, it can be a little tricky to work with. I recommend using this glaze on small areas or decorations only. I would not use this recipe to cover a large area or a whole cake. Because it needs to be brushed on, it would be too tough to cover a large area before this glaze would begin to set. My glaze took about 30 to 40 minutes to dry smooth and firm to the touch, but each batch may vary on drying time depending on what type of alcohol was used and how humid your climate is. Also, this glaze does not like oil at all. You can see here on the white fondant that it bubbled and separated on the surface because of the oil in the fondant. So save this recipe for minimal decorating. And lastly, the vegetable oil. This one is probably the most convenient way to shine up a cake. I'm sure all of us bakers have a bottle or two or ten already on hand and stored in our cupboards. Brushing the oil over the fondant was super easy to do, and because it is a fat, just like the shortening, it will go on smoothly over both dry or oily fondant. But I wanted to let you guys know that this shine is just temporary. It lasted about two and a half hours before the fondant absorbed some of the oil. The shine wasn't completely gone, but it was no longer glossy. It had faded into a more satin-like finish like the shortening. If you need a quick, easy way to add gloss to a fondant cake just an hour or two before a party, this method works really well. So now let's see what happens when we let these glazes sit at room temperature overnight. It has been 24 hours since I painted these glazes onto the fondant, and some of them definitely held their shine a little better than others. Dinky Doodle Shell and Shine without a doubt is one of the best ways to give a fondant cake long lasting shine. This glaze looks exactly the same as it did yesterday. The coating is somewhat firm and is so smooth to the touch. This is definitely a new favorite of mine. PME Glaze Spray is also an excellent choice for long lasting shine. It has the same smooth feel that the Shell and Shine does and it held up just as well as the Dinky Doodle Spray. And you can see here that both the Shell and Shine and the Glaze Spray yellowed the fondant. But overall, I am extremely impressed with how well these products held their shine. They are definitely something I will use again many times in the future, I'm sure. Now for the shortening. It isn't quite as shiny as it was yesterday, but it still has a mild satin-like shine. More shortening can be added any time to the fondant to easily restore its original shine. Also, streaks can be made in the shortening if it is touched, but a quick buffing with a paper towel will smooth it back out again. And even 24 hours later, the white fondant is still just as pure white, but the shortening never dries out, so it sort of becomes a magnet for dust, and each little piece will show on a white cake. Oh, corn syrup and alcohol, what has happened to your sparkle? This glaze recipe did not hold up as well as I had hoped. It is still very shiny, but not as water-like as it was yesterday, and a couple of new pin-sized holes have appeared on the glaze's surface. 
I'm sure a second coat would restore it to its original glory, but I'm not sure if it would just last a day or if that would be a permanent fix, but it would definitely be worth a try. Vegetable oil, where did you go? It looks like the fondant has absorbed most of the oil, but you can see there is a hint of satiny shine left on the fondant. This recipe had the biggest change 24 hours later, but thankfully this one would be super easy to reapply in a hurry. So that's all for this tutorial. I hope you guys found it super helpful, and if you have any questions about any of these products, just leave me a comment below or message me on my blog and I'll do my best to get back to you. Have a great day guys! Thanks for watching!